the following question reads uh, that the following account describes the preparation of Peligot salt uh, named after the 19th century French chemist who first made it. Place 6 grams of potassium dichromate 6 and 100 cm cube of beaker and 8 grams of concentrated hydrochloric acid and 1 cm cube water. Warm the mixture gently. If carefully done, the dichromate 6 will dissolve without the evolution of chlorine. On cooling the beaker in ice bath, the solution will deposit long uh, will, will deposit long orange red, red crystals of peligot salt. An analysis of peligot salt uh, showed that it contained the following percentages by mass. So given the percentages of all the elements in peligot salt, and you're being asked to calculate the empirical formula of peligot salt. So over here, I've uh, copied the percentages and I'm going to try and figure out uh, the empirical formula. The first thing is that you have to divide the percentage mass by the ARs. So that is what we are going to do. So this over here is the first thing that I've done. Uh, the ARs, potassium 39.1, I've divided it by 39.1. Uh, chromium 52, uh, chlorine 35.5 and 16. Let's figure out what the answers, uh, the values are after division. Uh, this is going to give you the moles, the relative moles. Mass versus mass divided by the AR. So you'll get the moles of all the atoms. So these are my answers on my calculator, 0 0.573, 0 0.573, 0 0.572 and 1.719. The next step is to figure out the simplest whole number ratio. So I'm going to divide everything by the smallest value, which is 0 0.573 or 72. So all of them are going to be divided by 0 0.573 and this is 1, this is 1. This is also 1 and this is equal to 3, which means that the formula of the salt, the empirical formula would be K1, Cr would be 1 as well, Cl would be 1 as well, whereas O would be 3. So this over here, it gives me the empirical formula of the salt. Now the next part of the question, part B, suggests a balanced equation for the formation of peligot salt. Now we have to look at what's, what was happening over here. Uh, what are the reactant was potassium dichromate 6 which was reacting with concentrated hydrochloric acid, HCl. So let's write that down. It's K2Cr2O7 and HCl was one of the reactants and it was forming this peligot salt which is K1, Cr1, Cl1 and O is 3. Now the first thing I'm going to try and balance this equation. K is 2, so there should be 2 peligot salt, so multiply by 2, so Cr would be 2 as well. So Cl is already 2. Uh, then there are Cl's which are 2. So Cl is coming from this side. So this should be 2. And the rest is we need to figure out how to balance. Now remember there is no hydrogen and there is no oxygen that is balanced. There are a total of 6 oxygens on the right side and a total of 7 oxygens on the left side. Now I can't change the numbers because this is already balanced. So I need to add something over here. Uh, Cl is 2, that's already balanced. Uh, Cl is hydrogens. There are 2 hydrogens and 1 oxygen that's missing. So there must be a water molecule that must be on the right side to balance out the hydrogens because this molecule has no hydrogens and to balance out the oxygen because this molecule only has six oxygen so this is, there should be one oxygen on the right side over here in and so a water molecule has to be there now the next part of the question is uh, part c the instruction suggests that strong heating might cause chlorine to be evolved what type of reaction would pr produce chlorine in this system now, to, the answer to this would be a redox reaction. Uh, why would, because chlorine is in the form of HCl. So, Cl is minus 1. And if chlorine gas is produced, that means oxidation would have occurred. And oxidation doesn't happen alone. There must be re reduction happening as well. So, it must be a redox reaction that must be taking place. When Cl minus 1 ends up changing into Cl2. So, a redox reaction must have occurred. Now, the next part, part two of the question is about uh, you have to use the data booklet to identify the relevant half equations and E0 values for the production of chlorine from the reaction between K2Cr207 and HCl. So we need to figure out what the reaction is going to be and the first thing you need to figure out is what are your reactants. Now potassium dichromate 6 means uh, that you have potassium ions in the system, you have uh, Cr2O7, 2 minus ions and you have H plus 1 and you have Cl minus 1 ions. The next part is I need to open the data booklet and figure out uh, the relevant E0 or uh, electrode potentials or the equations 
of those electrodes which involve these ions. So let's open the data booklet. Now here I've uh, opened the data booklet. The first thing is uh, I figured out uh, the Cl minus 1 equation. It's 1.36 volts. I'm going to copy that. Uh, the next one. The next one that I found out is this CR207, uh, 1.33 volts. I'm going to copy that as well. Then you also have this uh, potassium ion equation, minus 2.92 volts. And finally, I'm also going to pick this uh, H plus 1 equation, although it would be required, but I'm going to pick that. And let's uh, just have our candidates. These are the four electrode reactions that are possible. Let's write them down together. So here you can uh, see all my four candidate reactions involving Cr207, Cl-1, H plus 1 and K plus 1. I'm going to figure out which one is going to gain electrons and which one is going to lose electrons. Now one very small thing that should be kept in mind before we figure out what the reaction is going to be, you need to uh, read this part because it's concentrated hydrochloric acid that's being used, it's concentrated HCl. Uh, so what would happen to one of those one of those electrode reactions if concentrated Cl minus one is used? So here's our reactions again, and we're using concentrated HCl. So if Cl minus one is concentrated, then this equilibrium, this electrode, is going to shift to the left hand side, because if Cl minus one ion concentration is high, it's going to shift. The equilibrium is going to shift to the left hand side, and more electrons are going to be produced. So this electrode potential would become more negative because of the more electrons. So it's going to be lower. So let's think of a value that is lower. Let's call this 1.25 volts. Now remember, this is a hypothetical value uh, because we were not sure. You need to use the Nernst equation to figure out the actual value, but the concentration is not given. So there's no way of figuring out what the actual value is going to be. But uh, since concentrated Cl minus one is used, equilibrium is going to shift to the backward side. More electrons would be would be produced and this electrode potential value would become more negative and it would become lower. So I've, I've just slightly decreased the value and now I'm going to try and figure out what the, uh, which one of the reactions is going to gain electrons out of the four and which one is going to lose electrons. Now the rule is that the higher potential is going to gain electrons and the lower potential is the one that's going to lose electrons. So if you look at all the equations, the highest potential is the one uh, that is going to gain electrons, uh, which is going to be this one, the first one over here. So this reaction over here is going to go in the forward direction. It's the one that's going to gain electrons because it's the higher E0. Now the other part is we need to figure out which one has a lower E0. Now lower E0 is this one. Uh, so it's going to lose electrons. It has the highest tendency to lose electrons, but we don't have potassium. Uh, we have potassium ions in our reactants, not potassium. If you go back and have a look at our reactants, as you can see over here, we don't have potassium. We have potassium ions. And remember, focus on this, we have H plus 1 ions as well, Cl minus 1, Cr207. So whatever happens, uh, we must have those in our reactants. So this last equation is not possible. Although it's the lower E0, it, it has the highest tendency to lose electrons. But we don't have potassium in our reactants. So we don't have potassium. So potassium is never going to lose electrons because there is no potassium in the first place. The next lower E0 is this equation over here. So hydrogen is going to lose electrons. It has the second highest tendency to lose electrons out of these four. But we don't have any hydrogen. We have H plus 1 ions. We don't have hydrogen. So we don't have hydrogen. That means hydrogen would not be able to lose electrons because there is no hydrogen present. So we're going to cut these two equations out. The only remaining uh, equation that we now have is the lower E0 is going to be the Cl minus 1. So this Cl minus 1 would end up losing electrons. We do have Cl minus 1 in our reactants. So we figured out uh, which uh, equation gains electrons, which one loses electrons. We need to make the number of electrons that are gained and the number of electrons lost equal. So I'm going to multiply this by 3. So this would be multiplied by 3 as well. This would be multiplied by 3 as well. And I'm going to add the two equations together. So let's, I've cleared it up. So let's uh, add the reactants. The reactants are Cr207. So let me quickly write that down. Cr207 2 minus uh, 14 H plus 1. These are my reactants in the first equation. And in the second equation, my reactant are, uh, the reactants are 2 Cl minus 1 into 3. So that's 6 Cl minus 1. And my products are going to be, uh, in the first equation, the products are 2Cr3+, plus 7H2O. 
and in the second equation the products are 3 Cl2 so that's uh, 3 Cl2 and that is going to be my equation for the reaction so here I have uh, copied my working and used these equations to write the full ionic equation so I have written down the two equations which are required the E0 values for the production of chlorine and uh, I have copied the overall equation as well so this is uh, the reaction that's going to take place now the next part of the question is that the use of dilute HCl does not result in the production of chlorine suggest why this is so so I am going back to my working and he is saying dilution does not produce this this reaction does not happen when it is diluted the reason is that if Cl-1 is diluted that means this equilibrium would shift to the right that means electrons are going to get consumed and this E0 would become more positive so let us say it becomes 1.40 volts now this would no longer be the lower potential and it, it would instead be the higher potential and it would be the one that would be gaining electrons so the production of chlorine would not take place because the values would have switched so it would only work if Cl-1 is concentrated and this equilibrium over here is shifted to the left that is the only way it's going to work so let's write out the answer so the answer is that the E0 value of Cl2 to Cl-1 becomes higher so the reaction becomes unfeasible part 4 of the question is use the data booklet to suggest the reason why it is not possible to prepare the bromine analog of peligot salt by using HBr instead of HCl so let's uh, go back to our working I'm going to replace this equation with the bromine equation so here I've uh, replaced uh, the bromine equation now you can see over here that bromine has a significantly lower E0 value this E0 value is not going to change much so this would always be the higher value this would always be the lower value so a redox reaction would always occur the lower potential would always lose electrons and you're going to get a redox reaction always unlike in the case of chlorine where the value was very close to 1.33 volts over here it would be very hard to actually change this value by changing the concentration so it would always remain the lower value it would always get oxidized and CR would get uh, reduced in the process so redox reaction would always occur so the answer is to part 4 that BRB minus 1 electrode is uh, very low uh, the E0 value is low so it will always get oxidized with CR207 so the other reaction would not take place and a redox reaction is more likely to happen in this case